Hello, hello, everybody. How the heck are we? We're back again. Can you believe it? I have some sort of consistency again on this channel. Barely, but we're getting there. NHL 22, hopefully we're back to the days of daily uploads. How fantastic would that be? Well, we are fresh off the back of a kind of meh draft in terms of draft picks, but the big acquisition of Mr. Michael Bondra really sets the tone for this defense and what we might be able to do here in the near future. So in terms of what we have to do, and obviously we can sort by expiring them, we might as well. Uh, I don't like to do that so I can get a look at the full picture here. Uh, Siegenthaler is still an RFA, so we'll qualify him. We'll let go of Christian Yaros, maybe? Yeah, oh my god, we ended up with so much trash. <laughs> So much trash. Um, we'll also qualify Galvas, but Holzer and Yarosh will just let go of. They'll probably come back anyway. The team won't be happy about it. But hey, we've already risked a lot of morale. Why not risk more? Uh, Philip Hedl. People try to sign. I'd prefer a three-year deal. I could probably get less than five. Three by five is not that bad for a middle six player. Stahl is obviously gone. And then Ponick, Solarik. Uh, Jasek will qualify because we'll be able to get him for cheap. Uh, pretty much all the RFAs will hold on to, but the UFAs can go. Not necessarily looking to clean house, but more so wanting to explore all of our options. As Philip Hedl does resign, Siegenthaler, Studnik, Sharangovich, everybody. Fantastic stuff. So, again, now we look... Not only at potential free agents, but first and foremost, let's look at who could be available out there because we did get that medium elite defenseman. Obviously not the good one, but the, uh, what, 50 overall, I believe he was? That That's Nick Letty, huh? Jesus Christmas. Uh, <laughs> you know, we could make some things happen here if anybody's available. Fingers crossed. Slavin's American or Canadian. I don't remember. I know he's from North America at the very least. Jonathan Taves is out there. Gino, obviously as a Russian, does not work for us. Is there anybody? All three of these guys can't. Yeah, I was going to say two Finns and a Swede. That sounds about right. Boy, some of these values, though, are still questionable. Let's see what else we got. Absolutely nothing. Dougie Hamilton is being thrown out there. Simon Edvinson, but he's yeah, Swedish. That just doesn't help. Well, I guess we'll hold on to said medium lead option. I mean, we're not going to trade him for Matt Zuccarello. We'll look for someone a little bit better. Andre Palat, funny enough, is out there. If we wanted to try and get him back on a dirt cheap kind of deal. Milroy Hendrickson. So there's nobody amazing who I would want back. But I do wonder if I can find the value to bring in Andre Palat. Because that would be fantastic. Without using Zucker, though, I'd say is the key. Uh, or Kopitz, obviously. Like those, those two are very, very valuable pieces for us. I, I don't think we have the value whatsoever. Uh, yeah, it's not going to happen. Wishful thinking. So let's see who's out there then in terms of free agents, and I think we might even get the season started in this episode. In terms of goaltenders, obviously sorted by overall. In terms of who we have, it is still Vitek Vanacek, big save Dave, uh, Pavel Francos. Uh, it's not it's not great, obviously. In terms of decent enough prospects, I'm pretty sure yeah none of those guys are are available. Allow me to double check our goaltending situation again. I really don't know if bringing in Vanacek is worth it. I mean, Parikh, uh, Ustamenko, Shogar. I think we just go with who we have, to be honest. I mean, I think we can sign filler. I mean, maybe even sign Vanacek and just put him in the AHL. But for the most part, there's just nothing, nothing really here. Right? So, oh boy, that is sorted very awkwardly by money. I don't know why you'd ever do that. So Vanacek is looking for a dirt cheap contract. For that reason, I'll look to pay him a little bit more. 
And if he's willing to sign that, there's there's no reason to not sign him to that. Big save Dave, looking for a little bit more. Uh, wouldn't be the worst idea to bring him in. I mean, Francois is an overall point worse. And Thomas Grice is out there as well as a German option. I think we'll just go with Vanacek and leave it there. Defensively, Klingberg, Severson, Yando, Clefbaum, obviously like none of these guys are available. Who's the top option that we have? This is tragic. Thank God we made the moves for the young defenders when we did. The top option by OVR is Eric Chernock, who, of course, they did incredibly dirty with that rating. But we can obviously look to sign him. And, of course, the freaking glitched out scrolling, it looks to restart it. Unbelievable. God, they better have that fixed next year. There's really no excuse for it. Just flat out no excuse. Uh, are there other defensemen available? Yes. Are there anybody great? No. In terms of prospects, none of them, none of them work, and the low fours are practically worthless. Forwards. Uh, huh. Highest rated guy is Timo Meyer. Okay, so Timo did hit the free agent list. That looks like an overpayment, but we have no competition for him, so hopefully Timo is willing to sign because that would be pretty nice. And again, we'll scroll back down the way that we did because screw it. Is there anybody else outside of Timo Meyer? Not that we necessarily need another forward, but we'll take him. Lars Eller is also out there. Competing with Nashville for him. We have the money. Well, yet again, the bottom six for us is just going to be absolutely stacked. But Meyer, Lars Eller. Uh, do we have anybody else? Anybody at all? P.S. Suter is also available at an 82 overall. Wants a one-year deal. We'll offer him a little bit more. See if he's willing to sign. Uh, Jonas Donskoy. Or however the hell Marshawn Lynch said his name. Uh, Hornquist isn't available. I wish you were. Mesnikov. Uh, Clint Costin's Russian. I don't see anybody that I am sold on outside of like Michael Froelich. Just to bring him back and maybe get like a seventh for him. So we'll send him a deal. And Toby Reader was also there, but we'll wait. So, in terms of forwards that have potential, uh, we got nothing. <laughs> we got nothing. Unfortunately, Abramoff's Russian cost in Ruzika, or Ruzichka, I think it would be. He is available, and he is decent. Um, I don't know, I'm pretty sure he's an RFA for Calgary. Basically, let's offer him the max deal that wouldn't require draft picks. I forget exactly what that number is right now. And either we get a decent young player, or we at least help him get a little bit more money out of uh, out of Calgary. Which, hey, why not? I think it is 1.5, isn't it? Yeah. So there we go. We'll send him a deal. <clears throat> German Arupsov, no. Yeah, God damn it! <laughs> he started the scrolling again. I hate it. Oh, I hate it so much. Uh, how good is Jerry Chow? Ah, oh, he's American. Schnarr, Tyler Madden, Jack Drury, American. I mean, I knew that, but I thought for some reason he was one of those players that was American but had a different nationality in game. So. I mean, we got seven offers out right now. Definitely some helpful deals if they go through. It'll give us some more wiggle room. Uh, again, we do have a, a pretty goddamn good head coach right now. And there's really nobody else out there that's all that good. Uh, what we'll do is take uh, Jakob Nemechek out of there. And we'll offer Ricardo Baines the maximum amount of money that you possibly can. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do 
we'll do what we gotta do, you know? We'll do what we gotta do. This is gonna take six and a half years to scroll to the max. So I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Um, yeah, let's screw it. I'll treat it, I'll, I'll treat it like a Twitch stream. And we'll go to lovely PC blank. Um, allow me to make sure. Hey, go to this recording properly. Uh, I was going to say, uh, sometimes with F1, you never quite know. Let's play some GeoGuessr, baby! Oh, f uh, come on. What are you even doing? Lady. What? Okay. Uh-huh. Shout out to my buddy Rudy on Twitch, by the way. He's playing some F1. Good dude. Uh-huh. The Halia. <laughs> okay. You're just, you're somewhere over here. I don't, I don't even care. Uh, almost nailed it. Almost nailed it. It was Romania, not Hungary. Cool. Uh, we're still not at the max contract for this dude. That's a stadium. And that's the University of Memphis, is it not? Memphis Tigers? Hey, hey, hey there we go. Walking in Memphis. And going on down to Memphis. We're still, uh, now, yes, I could have edited this to a max offer. Screw you. This is way more fun. If I have to sit here, then damn it, that's what's going to happen. Uh, if I was the University of Memphis, shout out to West Memphis, Arkansas, the home of Psycho Sid Vicious. Uh, Graceland, I mean, it's got to be in town, right? Also, we hit the max offer, but I, I need to figure this out first. Uh, Rhodes College, it's not what we're looking for. Where is the University of Memphis? Where are you? You gotta be in here somewhere. That's a big ass cemetery. Martin Luther King Park, Memphis Medical Center. Oh God, the Metal Museum for like music or actually metal. Because depending on the answer, I might go there. Oh my God, Memphis University School. Ah, ah. I mean, I don't really see a big arena though. A big stadium. You know? I mean, it's got to be, like, somewhere right here in front of me. And I'm going to be very mad. Very mad. When I don't find it. Because it, I'm going to give up. And then it's like, hey, if you had just looked a little bit past Dogwood Creek. How large is Memphis? Jesus. All right. Memphis. Oh, it, what? I just looked past it. Where is it? It was next to Orange Mound. Dang. Yeah, Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium. There it is. Well, hey, we gave it a good shot. Hope you enjoyed uh, a little bit of GeoGuessr, because why not? So let's send this offer here, only to probably still have him decline. And, uh, whoops, we do have to check Scouts as well. Again, we don't have a horrible armada of Scouts, but a few extra good ones uh, would be nice. So let's send all of these people new deals, because... Why not? And, uh, you know, while I'm doing that, <laughs> while I'm just sending all these A-plus deals, let's see what we got, baby. Where are we going next? Oh, God. That is Japanese as hell. That's what that is. We are, we are in the Nihon. Absolutely. In case you needed any further introduction. Uh, the only thing I can think is that this might be coastal. And that's just a pure hunt, but it's also eh, it's also quite mountainous. Ooh, okay. Well, hey, we know it's in Japan. Uh, in terms of mountains, let's just say it's in Sendai. Outside of Sendai. It was outside of Kobe in Osaka. Well, hey, we put up a good fight. Uh, screw it. Speed round. Betrans Kakarambas. Uh, that look, is that, is that Portuguese? Are we looking at the Portuguese? Hold on. Or is it outright Spanish? Uh, that is, that is outright Spanish. And that looks like a French flag for some reason. <laughs> oh, goodness. This actually has me worried. Hey, it was Portuguese. Dot BR. We're in Brazil. Uh, we're in a pretty big part of Brazil, which to me, I'm going to go for Sao Paulo and hope for the best. 
because we'll half-ass this. Yes, it's very late. Uh, oof. Oh, it was Paraguay. It was over the border. Nope, it wasn't. It was right on the edge. Jesus, I would have had to click for days and... Come on, man. Come on. Cowtown. That's the answer. We found cows. And that's all that matters. This, this, yep. Yep. I, I got geoguessed. That's what happened. Middle of gosh darn dang nowhere. With cows and goats that don't know what's going on. And neither do I. Uh, you're in France. Uh, nope. Nope, it was Russia. Well, hey. Considering we half-assed a lot of it, we did pretty good. So, we have sent all the offers out to the scouts. We'll see who accepts and who doesn't. And uh, we'll take it from there. Let's see what happens here now in terms of the moves. That coach ended up accepting, which is great. Uh, scout signs. Scout signs. Uh, scout signs. Scout signs again. And another. And another. And another, so our, our staffing gets much better. Pia Suter has signed. Michael Frolik has signed. Timo Meyer has signed. Yes. Eric Chernock, Lars Eller, Vitek Vanacek. Rzichka signs, but we don't know if he'll be able to come over yet. And Calgary matches. So at least we got Adam a little bit more money. It's not too bad. We're down to $5 million in cap space. Let's double check. Yield... Crossed air really quickly and double check how many defensemen we have. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then that does leave room. That does leave room to sign some of our prospects. Like if we wanted to sign Kopitz, we could. I think that's the big decision is seeing what overall he has by the time we get to the start of next season and whether or not he's worth signing. Uh, but we do need a defenseman who is eligible here. And that person is going to be... Oh, God. I've probably missed somebody already, but whatever. We're committed. Christian Yarosh. <laughs> There it is. Christian, come on back, buddy. We'll give you a max two-way deal. And then we need to sign a thousand forwards. Just a thousand of them. Uh, so we will go for uh, Zemgis Gergensens. Welcome back to the Zemgis. Ernie Hathaway, Lazat. Come on, Toby Reader. We'll bring him back Toby. Oh, that was an expensive-ass deal. I didn't even notice. Might have to try to trade that one away. I don't know where the hell he gets the nerve of asking for that much money. Michael Grabner. Come on back. Haglund's not available. Uh, David Camp. McComp. Maple Leafs legend. Come on back. Nyquist isn't available. DeLaurier, Levo, Kuhnhockel. Tom Kuhnhockel, the German. German sensation that's rocking the nation. Martin Furk can bring you back. That brings up to 38 contracts. Uh, who else? Who else wants to sign? Sasha Chmielewski is American, Russian American. Uh, Geeky Grant. Antoine Roussel, after all this time, we'll bring him back if we can even sign all these guys. Richard Ponick. Marco Dano. Uh, Blickfeld's Denmark, right? Yep. Joachim, welcome aboard. Uh, Tomasz Nosek is back, hopefully, as well. Some of these guys were asking for money. We'll see who we can afford and who we can't. Uh, Rudy Balsers, the Latvian. After all this time, we'll bring him back. Charles Houdon, I wish it was French. Talabozak, Nygaard, Paquette, Cody Eakin, Gaten Haas is a Swissman. He is a Swissman. Confer Lashinsky, Maxim Latunov, Russian. Swamala won't be available. Oh, come on. We're almost where we need to be. 
Almost, almost. Latieri is American. What the hell am I even thinking? To be honest, I was slightly distracted. Uh, Tomas Yurko will bring back. And that should be enough. Should be. I mean, it gets us to 46 contracts. That That's enough. <laughs> so here we go. Let's see what this team ends up looking like. Martin Furk signs. Toby Reader, Gergensen's Camp, Haas, Balsers, Roussel, Nosek, Panik, Kuhn, Dano. Gotta, gotta, gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. Broke them all. Oh, we're looking good. We are looking good. I'm feeling good. We're doing well. Um, even if Radic Faxa gets mad because I signed David Kampf. Like, if you're worried that David Kampf's going to replace you, that's not a me problem. That's a you problem. That's a you need to be better problem. That's what that is. So here we are. Let's take a look really quickly. Goaltending. Vanacek could be the guy. Could start off with Vanacek and Park, and then see what happens with Ustamenko Shogard. I don't hate that. Defensively, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's pretty much perfect. Could check to see if Chernock is a better fit. So the argument is for the third pairing, do we want Chernock Gudis with Kempney, or do we want one of our other younger dudes? And then for the forwards, I mean, good lord, like the amount of people that we could put onto this team just to see who makes it, you know? Like, really, finding, like, the perfect fit for the fourth line, I'm going to have to gonna have to organize a little bit, but we pretty much know. I mean, I'll, I'll see which one of our coaches happens to be the best fit. But in terms of unsigned players... To sign Kopitz and put him right in the NHL or to not? That is the question. The good thing is he is an offensive defenseman. So he should work well with people on this team. So that's kind of the, the big question at this stage. And if we get rid of that other goalie coach in Bondra, I, mean, I think it's clear Bomedian needs to be our head coach. He needs to be. Uh, we'll demote Belfour. And we'll go with Lacroix. Lacroix can be there. Uh, and then the goalie coach. Let's go ahead and drop you down, which means uh, Belfour. Even though you're a defensive specialist, we're gonna we're gonna sack you. And I know it's a lot of forward-based coaches, but we're gonna do what we have to do. Nielsen B minus B minus B minus and a B. Honestly, I should have fired Thomas. Not that other dude, but it's not a, a big deal. Uh, we're going to drop you down. Uh, Baines with that A-, minus will make him better. And, uh, goodness, what am I doing, what am I doing, what am I doing? You <clears throat> get to be, <clears throat> excuse me, the associate coach. So let's go out and sign some goalie coaches. Uh, again, Belfour isn't a, a horrible person to bring back, but I'm not even going to bother out of pure laziness. And Lubomir Bondra, who we just fired, we just fired, uh, we'll try to bring him back. And uh, for the AHL, Jakob Nemechek, we will bring you here as well. So, hopefully that all works out. I'm going to have to optimize the scouts in a minute. That's all well and good. The last thing I want to do because I'll double-check who works best with our head coach and everything and get this team all set up. The last thing that I want to do is check the trade block one more time. Because maybe, possibly, potentially, somebody is there. Like, Gleboff and Riley are both available. Both 20 years old. Both could be useful. Trade the one medium elite to try to get Gleboff and Riley back. It's not a terrible idea. Not to mention some of the veterans that we can add. Adekalio has got to be Finnish. Yeah. Or, of course, we hold on to the medium elites and try to use him for a larger deal than just bringing in two prospects who are honestly a bit of a toss-up at this point. Because really, that, that potential and that overall at that age, it's, it's not exactly a slam dunk of being amazing, is it? Krug, Barry, Rask, St. Louis is blowing it up. Unfortunately, in terms of that dream of there being a top-notch player, there is not. 
So I do think, although uh, Guillermo McInnes is there, 73 at 18, I mean, he's a safer bet than the other guys. So hold on to that medium elite or go out and trade for Guillermo McInnes in draft pick, potentially. Who's to say? We have good options. I like where we are right now. Uh, draft pick wise, it's just a bunch of scrap. Uh, obviously, now we'll have another new first round pick to work with, and uh, I wouldn't mind holding on to that first round pick. We'll see what happens. I like where we are. Let me know what you think about coming. Uh, a couple of the you know, toss up decisions that we have ahead of us here, and I'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow for this next season. Will we make the playoffs again? Is the question with a forward core like that of that top nine? I can't help but think the answer is yes, because holy hell, especially if we have like shark, nearly an all sharks line. If I call it Blickfeld, he could be with Hurdle and Meyer. That's a damn good team. It's a damn good team. It's not an amazing team, but it's pretty good. We'll see what happens tomorrow.